I am editor in chief, Lexi S. Benson, owner of Copyright Magazine, and today we are talking with Larissa Gladys from the East Side Fix about a new art opportunity in Milwaukee. Oh. Hello, yeah, so I'm Larissa Gladding. I'm special projects manager with the East Side Business Improvement District, which is like a stretch of East North Ave, a bunch of businesses in that area, basically kind of from the lake down to the river and then like side streets up and down. We do all kinds of like economic development work. And then luckily for me and my executive director or two person staff, we get to do some things that are extra fun for us, like public art projects. And that's what we're trying to talk about today and get people to know about it. And we're looking for artists. And so love to get the opportunity in front of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the art opportunity you guys are trying to do right now is going to be what kind of opportunity? What does it all include? It is basically a, so the space is supposed to be like a temporary public seating and public art space. It's now our second year doing it. It started last year in response to not having a lot of public seating options in general in our district and then especially not many options where businesses could do outdoor public seating or dining because of COVID. And so because we have very limited public seating in the area, we we're like, well, do we have any spaces in the district that no one's really using anyway? And one of those spaces was this parking lot that's between, it's on North Ave, it's between Von Trier's and Beans and Barley. It's a owned parking lot. And not a lot of people know it's there and it tends not to be used very much. And so we just kind of out of nowhere came up with this idea of buying 10 wooden picnic tables. And we're like, I mean, we do Black Hat Alley, so we are obviously trying to get as much art in the space as possible and as many opportunities. And so what we did was we put out a call to artists and we picked 10 artists or artist teams, so 12 artists total. And we had them each paint their design onto the tables and then do the same thing this year. And what happens is the designs are selected, artists paint for, I think this year we're doing five days. And then the art lot, they call it the East Side Art Lot, is open throughout the summer and most of the fall. And it's there for public art and public seating. And that's pretty much the point of it is to have some more accessibility to seating options, have people have a place where they can come and hang out and not have to buy something to spend time, get to see some more public art, get to be introduced to some new artists. Um, and then we also are able to incorporate some programming in the space that we normally can't do because we just don't have anywhere to do it. So the art element is obviously getting artists to submit designs and then getting to select them and paint them. And then we get table sponsors throughout the project that help fund the project, help pay our artists. And then once the project closes and goes back to being a parking lot, then our sponsors get to take the tables and then they live throughout the city, which then also takes the responsibility off of us to have to find a place to put them because we have no storage. And so that's kind of the basics of the project. And so we're at the stage where now is we just put out our call to artists on Monday We've got about two weeks right now until the deadline closes. So we are looking for submissions to paint these tables. Wow, that's super cool. Is there an age qualification of African American? Yes, we are looking for artists that are 18 years of age or older. We're also, for this one, we're looking for artists based in Milwaukee County. You don't have to be from Milwaukee County, but at least been based here for a while. Uh, and then we're also doing a priority again this year for Black, Indigenous, and people of color, women, and queer artists, same as last year. So that's kind of like the eligibility of the artists for the projects. Very cool. I think it's really exciting because it's allows the opportunity to really engage with this space, right, through, through public art, which is something that has kind of been kind of on the rise for the last year or so with the pandemic, with there not being the ability to have like live art shows and things like that. 
I've seen a lot of live art um, in art spaces starting to pop up, which is something a lot of our residents have been complaining about that we don't have enough of. So this sounds like a solution to that problem. And then obviously getting people outdoors in the summertime to be cooped up so much. Um, what kind of designs are you hoping to see? That's a really good question. I think it's hard to give that answer because I'm specifically not a part of the selection process. I'm doing all the artist intake and everything, so I would be way too biased at that point to do the selection process. But I can talk about kind of what the designs were last year, which people can see on our website too. There's some really good photos of all of them. Um, but some of the designs, they were all over the place. Some of the ones that the jury team last year really liked were ones that were very like representative of some Milwaukee elements. So there was one that was done by an artist team, uh, Steph Davies and Esten Bennett, and they both represented the wax wing, which was nearby at the time. And they did one that was like support local business and they had some kind of elements of all the nearby businesses. So obviously, for our organization, that was one that people liked. Um, but then there was also a couple ones. There was one that was the Milwaukee skyline with these like cartoon monkey monkey monsters that had cheese heads on. The one the artist did that she don't, normally does like illustrations for kids and kind of things. And then there was another one that had the Hone Bridge with Milwaukee colors and two women facing each other. And so I would say obviously like local symbolism represented is a big one um we also look for some like bright colors or a lot of contrast in design because they are picnic tables they're not necessarily like right there on a wall facing you big they want they want to be something that maybe you see from a distance and you're like what's going on there and go look at it um so for example we had a couple that did some really geometric designs and colors, one that was like big blocks of color that really stood out and helped make the space really appealing for people to come and use it. Um, there was another one that did similar like geometric, but it was stained glass sort of shapes. And the artist did, it was a BLM piece. And then so they had different names of people who had um, faced um, police violence and brutality throughout the years throughout that and it was a really beautiful piece that really stood out and it required you to come and take a look at what was going on in it. And then we had another one where someone got really creative with using the idea that was going to be a table for someone and basically made it like a maze throughout the tabletop design. So when you sat there, there was an entrance and an exit on both ends of the table. So you could like, <laughs> I know, you could sit and go through it. And so it's hard to say kind of like what we're looking for, but I was gonna tell you some of the criteria that we, our jury has that might be helpful for people to hear. Yeah. Uh, and it's not very long because we like to kind of give openness to different opinions and let people be creative. But one of it is like beauty of the composition, which is pretty simple, but it's uniqueness, which is kind of goes with everything I just said. It's Kind of bring your own style we don't want to see like the same thing we maybe see in every other public art piece we want to see an artist's unique style and then there's also compatibility with the the type of the the space what work with the fact that it's a table and it's not necessarily a wall or a canvas and see how you might make it how, how you might make the seats different from the tabletop but play with it and be creative and just kind of incorporate either your identity or where we are or just something completely abstract. So, yeah, not the most helpful, like, specific <laughs> advice, but... Give what I do. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, do a good job. Exactly. <laughs> Easy. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, I know there's obviously a lot of social teaching in our community and in society in general. And I know a lot of times there are people who want to come to the east side, but are not sure if it's a safe place for them, right? So what are some things that you can ensure that creators that are contributing or people who want to see the public are know about the east side and the east side big area that will make them a little more secure in that part of it? 
Totally. That's a really good question. I think it is a really tough question because obviously in Milwaukee, that's, there's not a perfect answer to any of that. There's a lot of places, even in the country in general, that simply like very unfortunately aren't especially welcoming or safe. And so I would say what I can say for that as far as making sure that experience is a positive one and trying to make sure that it's welcoming and that artists want to have their work there and be shown is that we do have a very like unique variety of businesses and residents and people represented in the area that I think is really helpful when like for example artists were painting last year and it was very positive to see how many people would simply walk by or walk in and say what's going on like can i learn about this project how can i help how i how, how can i support and i think that is a good example of the fact that there are people on the ground that care about what's going on and the type of art that would be produced and the people that are being represented. And I think too, we have so many people of like various ethnicities and incomes and um, sexuality and everything represented in the area that I think it showed that we had more people coming in to see these pieces because people of different idea identities were being represented that it's it's nice to know that if people come in and bring their work into a space or in our, our community that it will be appreciated and that we can use as an organization our kind of sway in the city and our following to make sure attention is put on these artists and their pieces and their perspectives um, in a way that might not always be a pet, paid attention to or be given as much of a platform. Definitely, absolutely, that makes sense. So how long are these pieces of art with our utilitarian going to be? Uh, yeah, they will be open and available to the public to sit on and view and look up and everything from, we're expecting to open June 11th weather dependent painting goes all well and everything through October 31st this year. Okay. So, a good while. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I wish it could be longer. Like we're really keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that this becomes something that the city and residents and everything see as a, a value to have this space and have pieces available and have this opportunity reoccurring. Um, and it becomes a long-term thing, um, but for the time being, it is temporary, and so it'll be open like through the majority of the summer and like the majority of the fall, which we're looking forward to. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna come out there, sit on a piece of table, and look at some art. I can, I can yeah. look at art at the same time. That's a win-win for me. <laughs> Good. Good. We like went back last year, some of the artists and some friends of ours, and we went back in just like the middle of the day and like stood around and took pictures on all their tables and like were running around with their kids and everything. It was a good time. It sounds like it. I mean, just being in public spaces and not having to have like a purpose to be there, like it changes the narrative. It's just like the opportunity to just be, just be and that's like. That's something we don't do enough of. It's just right. <laughs> so how right? do you submit in order to be a candidate for one of these great opportunities? Yeah, well, people can find our call to artists, which has like the whole description. If people are like, you've said so many things and I still don't know what you're talking about. It's on our website. I think it's eastside.org. Let me double check that that's it's the eastside.org and then you can go to our like what's happening page and you'll find the eastside art lot it's got all the pictures of last year's tables if you want to like get an idea of what they looked like it's got a link to our call to artists which has like a manufacturer's image of our table in case anyone wants to use it for renderings there's another um, top-down version also on our website it has the dimensions of the tables for anyone who wants to figure that out 
It lists what the commission is, which is $500 per table. It lists my contact information if anyone wants to ask me any questions and totally available to answer any questions that aren't fully answered on this or in the call to artists. Um, and it says all of the submission materials, which includes the proposed design, one to two renderings, depending on kind of what your design is like, and then a couple examples of past work, and then a short artist bio. And then if you're working in an artist team, so more than one artist is totally welcome providing everyone's information. Um, and yeah, I think that's the majority of what's on there that would be most important for this. Um, I did I did come up with a small list of advice for anyone who. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> please share, please. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. All right, sweet. So I would say the first one, the big, big one, that was definitely a takeaway from last year's artists was I really want to encourage anyone who is new to public art or large scale work to apply because that was one of the major things that our artists from last year talked about being a takeaway is they never apply for things like this and they just did it and they said, why not? It's a picnic table, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And they were all so surprised that they got it and I think it's the epitome of not believing in yourself. It's an opportunity that's just outside of your grasp for some reason mentally and it obviously worked out. I think it was probably like 60 to 75 percent of last year's artists this was their first large scale or public art piece and so i highly recommend that if you're just thinking about it just do it like it will take a little bit of your own time to create a design um but i think if it ends up working out it's worth it um it's a really good experience to get it's definitely a good stepping stone to other projects like this to have that in your portfolio to have that experience under your belt it's also a really good opportunity to meet some other local artists that you might not know and get to work with them for like five days is something that our artists really enjoyed last year too me too i just got to be there and like have to talk to people and help them but it i think i really encourage that obviously anyone should apply any level of experience but to those that think it might be out of their reach just do it just do it if you need someone to tell you to do it i'm telling you to we're, just we're both saying it right now just yes. do it just, try. just give it a chance <laughs> exactly and if you have questions or you need like a hype up you can email me and i'll say it in all caps or something hey. <laughs> so that's like a that's the biggest piece oh and it's paid so right yeah um, another piece of advice was kind of talked about this really briefly, but be mindful of what you submit as your examples of past work um, and how com compatible it is with your design. I think this is most relevant again to maybe newer artists, but I think that's part of our judging criteria is obviously trying to pick people that we know can do what they submitted. Mm -hmm. it's, I think some people might have in their head that I need to submit a design that's packed with detail and it's there's so much going on in it, which is great and fantastic, but it's not a requirement for being selected. Um, and I think if you, for example, haven't worked with acrylic paint, which is what we work with for this, or you haven't worked outdoors or on such like a weirdly shaped canvas um, and your past work kind of shows that you haven't done that kind of thing, simplify your design a little bit it'll increase your chances with our judges and it doesn't mean you won't get selected so that's another one for sure um let's see the other one partially part, this one partially benefits me but it's still pretty legitimate right um, submit as soon as you can um, our deadline i want to say is may 6th uh, it's a thursday it's uh, like right before midnight um, and obviously I know a lot of people are not full-time artists, nor do they really have the time right now to submit tomorrow. So this is all with a grain of salt, but the first reason is a little like psychological and not as legitimate, but 
the way that we um, set up our slides that the jury views is set up in the order we receive submissions. So the earlier you submit your designs, the faster or sooner they'll show up in the artist's minds. Um, if you submit one minute before the deadline, they will still see your design 100%. They'll see it multiple times. So it's not, it's not the most legitimate advice, but just keep that in mind maybe as a little push to submit earlier, um, that they will see it sooner in the process if you submit it sooner. More real reason is when people submit designs, we technically do not accept any um, submissions that are incomplete, so missing any materials. Um, if I have time and my plate isn't too full, I will always reach out and say, hey, I see you don't have your passwork send that in and then your submission will be complete. But as most people tend to submit in the last day or two, there's just no time to follow up and say, send me whatever you didn't finish. And unfortunately, that means people's submissions don't get included. So obviously the, the number one thing is read the submission materials and submit everything. Right. But it's really easy to forget something and then you'll kick yourself later. So the sooner you send it to me, the easier it might be for me to say, whatever advice I need, might need to give you. So that's one. And then the last one is, it's in the call to artists. We kind of talked about it a little, but if you are an artist that's BIPOC, a woman, queer, please include that in your artist description. It's something that helps our jury committee know that this is an artist that is one of the ones that like prioritize that we want to feature and have their work featured. Um, and it's also something that it's information that we are not going to be like talking about publicly, putting all over the place, unless that's something an artist felt like they wanted us to express. Um, but I do understand that that can kind of feel uncomfortable to put out there in something, something only me and our jury criteria will see. Uh, or a jury team, and our jury team will also be selected to be representative of those types of populations and people. So I hope that makes people feel better, but I do understand that that's an uncomfortable thing to put out there. Yeah, I think it's really important that you gave that advice because often placing those things, you become the disenfranchised, but actually within this opportunity, it's opportunity to actually be represented, opportunity to actually have a fair chance of actually getting the opportunity to do this. And so I think that's a, that's a great shift that we don't often see. So I think that's a great advice to give. Is there anything else that you want people to know, anything else that we should share to get them pumped and excited to apply, 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 apply? Oh my gosh. I feel like that energy you just bring was like exactly what we need. Um, I can't think of anything else specific. I would say, again, like reach out if you have any questions or doubts, check out our website, see the work of people last year. All of the artists, like social medias or websites are tagged, so you can go see them. Most of them post on their social media about the experience. If you need like to be hyped up that other people last year had a good time, it'll be a good time. It's, we did make another difference this year is we added an extra day of painting and we made it a Sunday, it's the first day. So we could hopefully make it a little bit more accessible to people that might work during the week or have kids or whatever. Um, so it should be a little less smashed as it was last time schedule wise. Um, so that's a good thing. So people, I hope people like that. Um, but yeah, I just really, really want people to apply. I want to see more applications this year. Um, we still had a lot last year, but I want to like, I want so many applications that our judges are like overwhelmed by <laughs> how many great things are out there. I want to come out of this again, being so amazed by the talent that's in our city. Um, and I am very, very excited to get to see it all in front of us again and just get, walk around and see it and walk past it and see people in the space, seeing everyone's art, learning about new people, new perspectives and talent. So everyone should apply.
Absolutely, absolutely. And we're excited to see it too. So all our locals, you guys better apply so we can come through and be like, hey, look at your art. We want to do that, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I want to thank you so much for joining me today, giving us all this little information. Thank you. And we can't wait to see what is in store for the inside. Uh, thank you so much. It's been so nice to get to talk to you and get to know you. And I'm very excited to see you there. All right. All right. Again, I am Lexi S. Brunson, Editor-in-Chief of Copyright Magazine. Apply. Bye. <laughs> All right, we are 